Hey guys, welcome to this very short tutorial on the dissection of the arm where we are going to use a pre-dissected model. So to begin with, we are going to look at the muscles that we find in the arm, both the anterior and the posterior compartment, as well as the nerves from the arteries. So this is going to be our biceps, okay? The biceps by meaning two seps heads, so it's going to have two heads. This is going to be the long head of the biceps, and remember it's actually going to originate um, from the supraglenoid tubercle. Then it's going to have a short head that is going to originate from the coracoid process. Also originating from the coracoid process, we're going to see a very small muscle. This is this muscle here, your coracobrachialis. And it's going to insert midway down the shaft of the humerus, whilst the biceps brachii is going to insert in the region of the forearm via a tendon that is onto the radial tuberosity of the radius. And it's also going to have an aponeurosis that will then insert onto the overlying skin that you find uh, in front of the cubital fossa. Then if you lift the biceps, the muscle that you then see uh, sitting on the humerus, this is going to be your brachialis muscle. The brachialis muscle is going to originate halfway down the shaft of the humerus, and it's going to also insert into the forearm. But the only difference would then be that it's going to insert onto the coronoid process of the ulna. And if you look at this part here, it's actually then going to form the medial part of the flow of the cubital fossa. The lateral part, we're going to see the supinator muscle when we eventually talk about the posterior compartment of the forearm. Then the nerves and arteries that we actually find in this region, this is going to be your brachial artery. And if you look at it closely, the brachial artery will travel in company of two very small venae committantes that are actually staining green from the specimen. And this brachial artery, actually travels in company of a nerve that is going to be your median nerve which is this one right and notice higher up in the arm the median nerve will actually be lateral to the artery but midway down the shaft of the humerus it's going to cross and come to lie medial hence when we get to the region of the cubital fossa we will then say the median nerve is the most medial structure then you have the brachial artery thus bifurcating now into a lateral radial artery which is smaller and a larger ulnar artery which is this one right then if i trace the nerves up they're actually going to form an m structure which is this here so the most lateral part is going to be our musculocutaneous nerve which is actually going to be the nerve of the anterior compartment the musculocutaneous nerve will pierce through this muscle that i showed you here as your coracobrachialis then it's going to come to lie between the biceps above and the brachialis beneath. And it's actually then going to give nerve supply to the muscles. Then this is your median nerve, this one. The median nerve is formed by a lateral division of the lateral cord, which is this one, and a medial division of the medial cord, hence you form a median nerve. And more medially on our M structure, we are thus going to identify the ulnar nerve, which you can then trace as the nerve that is then going to pass behind the medial epicondyle as it gains access into the region of the forearm. It's actually then going to pass through uh, the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris, originating from the medial epicondyle and the olecranon process posteriorly. So these nerves are just passing through the arm but they don't have muscular branches in the arm right however the median nerve actually gives you actually gives you vasomotor branches that are actually going to innervate your brachial artery in this case we can appreciate this one here right. and since these two are traveling together they can actually be affected in supracondylar fractures of the humerus hence resulting in Volkman's ischemic contracture of everything distal to the elbow as well as um, clinical manifestations relating to the median nerve. Then if you look at this here, this is going to be your radial nerve but we can appreciate the radial nerve from the anterior side because it's actually emerging from the back which I'm going to show you and it's going to emerge as the most lateral structure within your cubital fossa. This radial nerve is going to be the nerve of the posterior compartment and the posterior compartment of the arm actually houses a muscle which is your triceps and tri meaning three seps heads right so it's going to have three heads it's going to have a long head 
that is going to originate from the infraglenoid tubercle, different from the supraglenoid tubercle, which was providing origin for the long head of the biceps. And it's also going to have a lateral and a medial head. And together, they form a single uh, muscle that is going to insert into the olecranon process. And those muscles, they're actually going to extend both the elbow and the shoulder joint. But they're actually main extensors for your elbow joint. And if you look at this posteriorly, there you find the radial groove or your spiral groove. And the nerve that you're actually going to find there is going to be your radial nerve, which in this case is this one, right? Coming back to the muscles of the anterior compartment, we can clearly see that the brachialis muscle only crosses the elbow joint, hence it's only going to flex the elbow joint. It's not going to cross the shoulder joint in any case. And the biceps is going to cross both the shoulder and the elbow joint, so it's going to flex both. However, this muscle is actually our chief supinator, which is going to affect that action on the synovial pivot joints that you find in the forearm, in particular, your superior radio ulnar joint, right? Then, this is going to be the coracobrachialis only crosses the shoulder joint, hence it's actually going to flex the shoulder joint only. Then we can also appreciate some muscles that are extrinsic to the upper limb but are actually going to be attached to the upper limb. For example, this is your cut pectoralis major and we can appreciate that it was actually coming to insert onto the lateral lip of the bicipital groove. And always remember, where you have a major, you'd also expect to find a minor. In this case, if you leave the pec major, this is going to be your pectoralis minor, actually going to insert onto the coracoid process, which I said will thus provide origin for coracobrachialis and the short head of the biceps. Then in this region, we have the deltoid muscle, which is going to form the shoulder prominence. This deltoid muscle is actually going to insert onto the lateral side of the humerus on your deltoid tuberosity. The origin for the muscle will actually be from the clavicle, the spine of the scapula posteriorly, as well as the acromion process. And then if you then look um, for more of a recap, so this is our brachial artery, right? So this is brachial artery traveling in company of a nerve, which is your median nerve, right? Then the more medial part of your M, that was our ulnar nerve, and the more lateral part was going to be our muscular vitellus nerve, right? And this was our radial nerve, which exists in both the anterior and the posterior compartment. So if you look at the ulnar nerve, at some point it's in the anterior compartment, but it's going to cross or pierce the, inter, the major intermuscular septum to go to the posterior compartment. Hence, we say it, we can see it behind the medial epicondyle. This is the radial nerve as it emerges from the radial groove to come to lie in the anterior compartment before it becomes the most lateral structure to keep it off fossa. And in this region, we can appreciate that it's actually now intimately related with the brachialis. Hence, if you look at the innervation for this muscle, you then say both the muscular cutaneous nerve, which is the nerve of the anterior compartment, and the radial nerve, which was the nerve of the posterior compartment, would thus innervate your brachialis muscle. So that's just about it. Thank you.